Hello, good evening, and welcome to the walk-in closet in Spencerville, where tonight on WOSN, we've got a Northwest Conference matchup for you between the visiting Bluffton Pirates and the homestanding Spencerville Bearcats. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Mark Bagley, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Spencerville. And Bags, we've got a, a good Northwest Conference matchup where Bluffton still controls their, their destiny in the NWC title race. Yeah, two of the top three teams in the Northwest Conference are playing tonight. Spencerville at 14-1. Uh, lead the conference, but Bluffton is right behind them, and they'll have a great game plan tonight. And when you talk about that game plan, what stands out for Bluffton that they've got to do to, to grab a victory tonight? First of all, they got a team rebound. They are outside, so they got a box and extra step. Go get the ball. Secondly, pace is important. They've got to run at Spencerville, not with them. And finally, their shot selection. Make one more pass for a great shot. And then when you take a look at Spencerville, 14 and 1, they've won eight straight. What stands out for Kevin Sensenball's squad that they've got to do? Spencerville is very impressive. And the first thing that they got to do tonight is shooters versus drivers. They got to find their shooters. The drivers got to penetrate and pitch and hit open shots. Number two, they've got to dominate the glass and rebound, win the backside war, and get second chance points on offense. And finally, the third thing, get stops and get out in transition. So the Bearcats, like I said, winners of eight in a row. Bluffton coming off a win, wanting to start a winning streak of their own. We'll see if they can do it next. First quarter action coming up between Bluffton and Spencerville here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Also, instant replays tonight are brought to you by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to Matt, callmattsheatings.com to schedule your free estimate. Here at C. Wright and Mark Bagley back here at the walk in closet getting set for this Northwest Conference matchup as we take a look now at the officials for tonight's contest. Appreciate them giving up their Friday night to join us. It's Scott Steinbrunner, Jerry Mater, and Aaron Braun will be the guys in stripes helping us. Make sure we've got high school basketball tonight. And now we'll take a look at the Bluffton Pirates. Todd Bobble in his 17th season leading the Pirates at 8 and 5, but 4 and 1 in the Northwest Conference control their own destiny to take home the conference crown if they can grab a victory tonight here at Spencerville. You take a look at the starting five there for Bluffton. As uh, really just a lot of inexperience, um, Mark, when you take a look at the Bluffton lineup. Just one senior on the whole roster, Carson Soper, he's in the starting lineup. Yeah, that's a testament to Coach Bob with this program. Been there for a long time, and they won 20 games last year and lost yeah. a bunch, and they're 8-5 and five and 4-1 of the conference, and this is a huge game for them tonight as they have a chance to, to, to tie the league. And then you take a look at the starting live five for the Spencerville Bearcats, 14-1. and one. It's believed to be their best start in nearly 70 years at 14-1, and one. and you take a look at the starting five there led by Josh Henline in scoring. The All-Northwest Conference performer a season ago scores 16 points tonight. But Dylan Smith, number 11, will chip in 14 per contest as well. So we've got Carter Sudoff in the center circle along with John Paul Yoder. We get set for varsity action here tonight from the walk-in closet between Bluffton and Spencerville. Bearcats winners of eight in a row on Bluffton. Coming off a 76-43 win over Lincoln View last Friday night. Get final. Everybody tucked in. Make sure their shorts are just perfect. And now we'll get set to tip. Sudoff, Yoder in the center circle. It's won by Sudoff. And the Spencerville Bearcats begin first with the basketball as Dylan Smith brings to the free throw line. Turns and gives to Evan Osting on the right wing. A lob back to Smith. Thought about the three for just a moment. Headline off a screen for three. Yes, sir. A great start for Spencerville. And that was good defense. And they started out man to man. So Bluffton, nothing different. Yoder with his back to the basket at the left elbow. Stripped as he went to Carson Soper, went to put it up, and it lands in the hands of the Bearcats. Spencerville wants to move quickly. Headline. Go straight to the window. Can't drop it in. High off the glass. Loose basketball. Scooped up by Sudoff. Given to Smith. He'll run to the high post to the window. Off the glass with the right hand. And Dylan Smith's on the scoreboard. And early on, Garrett, Spencerville made two hustle plays there and got an extra possession. And that's what Bluffton can't allow tonight. Wade Ginther with the basketball working to his right at the right wing. Surveys. 
into the near corner. Soper cross court pass to Donaldson, got his defender in the air into far corner. Works to the left elbow, jump shot from Donaldson is up and good for the first basket for Bluffton. Entry pass poked away by Yoder. Here come the Pirates with a three on two. Instead, they'll slow things down as Soper at the top of the key. Throws left to Ginther. Deep three on the way from Soper is up and good, and we're tied at five. Great answer by Bluffton. That was a good possession there. They got a steal, but they ran at them, didn't have anything, got a good possession, Garrett. So the Bearcats got out to the first five-point lead. Bluffton scores an X5, and we're all knotted up at that number as Ostern has it on the right wing. Gives to Henline. Thought about the three. Smith trying to get it down low instead. Top of the key to Dylan Cook. Ostin to Smith. He's got a little wall if he wants to work with it. Floater, no. And a rebound comes down to Ginther. He'll run the floor a little bit. Handoff. Donaldson into the far corner to Soper. Baseline drive. Trickles it in. So the Layfeld of Welding and Industrial Supplies scoreboard reads 7-5, first lead of the night for the Pirates. And a really good start by Soper. He's really been aggressive on, on his outside shot and his, and his drive. Osting holds on the right wing, gets down low to Cook, stripped from behind. And the Pirates come in the other way. Can't hit the re can't hit the layup, but the rebound by Soper is up and good. Seven first quarter points for Soper. And a 9-0 run here for the Pirates. Smith at the free throw line to the window. Scoop shot blocked by John Paul Yoder. It'll stay with the Bearcats. So Bluffton, a nice response here, Mark, after getting down 5 0 They've scored the next nine points. They really do offensively, they really have done a good job of going right at Spencerville and early sub here for Spencerville with uh, the coach's son coming in. Yeah. Owen sends the ball in for Josh Henline. They'll bounce into Dylan Cook in the mid-post. Stripped, it's stolen away by Ginther. He'll meander through the Bearcat defense, but stripped by Smith. Lob pass up ahead to Cook, who is still behind the play. His shot can't hit, but he'll step to the free throw line. So a little out of sorts here in the mid-quarter portion of this first quarter. As you take a look at the Matt's heating and cooling NC replay, Cook got in a tough spot, fouled on the shot, and he'll step to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And almost no teams, Garrett, uh, practice this week on Wednesday. Right. And you can kind of see that uneven play by both teams with turnovers early on. And I think we'll see that. Uh, I would expect both teams here to settle down the next minute and go from there. And Wednesday's kind of a, a pivotal day practice-wise, is it not? It is. It, it, you know, you, you put your game plan in Tuesday, and you really have a hard practice Wednesday. And so teams had to adjust to that and probably went a little harder yesterday. So those two points by Cook gets the Bearcats off to Schneid. 9-7, still a two-point lead for Bluffton. Baseline drive, left off. Ball still loose in the lane. Out to Donaldson. Hit a two-point bucket early in this first quarter as we approach the midway point of the opening stanza. And early on, Bluffton has driven right at the aggressive defense of Spencerville. That's been a huge key early on. Ginter in a lane. Loose basketball scooped up by Evan Osting. Sends a ball to the window. Can't drop it in. And a rebound comes down to Yoder. Bullet pass up the floor to Ginter. He's able to keep it inbounds and hands off to Donaldson at the high left point. And you can see how hard Spencerville is trying to pressure Bluffton and turn the ball over. And so when you get pressure, you got to go back door just like that. Shot off the mark. And a rebound. Comes to Smith. Long outlet pass up ahead to Osting. Lost the handle on it. Can't float it in. Donaldson aboard for Bluffton. Spencerville told us before the game they wanted to run. Both sides getting out early and a charge committed by Wade Ginther. And you can see, Garrett, both teams, we have eight turnovers and, and we're just over four minutes in the game. There's been a lot of missed layups, a lot of uneven play, and, and both teams will settle down. Um, it, it's that, that point in the season where you're playing your best basketball, and so far it hasn't been that. But uh, Spencerville's aggressive defense right now is starting to cause some problems for Bluffton. You saw the look at the charge here on the Matt's, instant, or Matt's heating and cooling instant replay. Bearcats looking to tie or take the lead here with the basketball with 3.30 to go. Osting 
Angles to his right, hands off to Spence, sends a ball. And the high post picks it up, gives to Blake Subbers. And right now, Henline's being face guarded. Three on the way, short by Osting. Lands in the hands of Soper. He'll run the floor. Push up ahead to Donaldson. He'll hold for just a moment. Let some Pirates get down the floor. And so far, Bluffton's held up on the rebounding end. It's 5-3 right now. Henline commits the foul, the first foul committed by Spencerville. And you can see here, Spencerville stubborn a lot, They're trying to get a lot of guys in the flow. They average about 20 points a game off their bench, and that's huge. So when someone's struggling or needs a blow, they can put somebody else in, and, and there's nothing lost. And that's why they're 14-1. Meanwhile, sort of the opposite for Bluffton. We're going to see a lot of these five guys on the floor tonight for the Pirates. To the window. Drops it up and in. Ginther's on the scoreboard for the first time. And that has been the strength of Bluffton in this first quarter. They've driven right at the pressure of Spencerville. It's the lead back out to four for the Pirates as Osting got in a tough spot and traveled with it. Or excuse me. Dylan Smith, I beg your pardon. A guilty party. And you can see, Garrett, that Spencerville's trying to do a little bit too much on their own. They're very experienced. They're very good. But right now, they're, they're pressing. And you give credit to Bluffton right now. They're going to try to spread them out. I was going to say, you just saw Todd Bomba tell him, spread it out. Get as much spacing as you can get. You see a drive. Baseline left off for Soper. It's thrown back into play by Henline. Long outlet pass to Dylan Smith. Easy layup in transition for Smith. And that's a live ball turnover, Garrett. That's what Bluffton can't do tonight because you can't defend that. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Sensiball in his 21st season here at Spencerville told us we got to get stops to, to get out in transition as you see a jump shot made by Taryn Boblet to grow the lead back out to four. Foul committed by, I believe, Boblet. And Coach Bob has done a great job here of spreading out, out um, Spencerville and driving right at the pressure. you got to either drive it or back cut it. They've done both here in the first quarter. You see the match heating and cool against the replay there as Bob got his mitt on the forearm. As headline inbounds to Sudoff and bounces back out to Smith. Four first quarter points, trying to get it back to Sudoff. Does, poked from behind. And quickly now, Bluffton at four fouls here in this first half. Yeah, they're out man size wise, Garrett. So, you know, we got a lot of different mismatches size wise. And so they're trying to bring fresh bodies in to, to match up inside. Landon Worcester picked up the foul. He'll take a seat on the bench. His headline comes off a screen, dumps it down low. And it's blocked. Carter Orr had the shot, blocked by the Pirates. It's a nice extra pass there by Henline, but Orr couldn't get it up without getting swatted. Ninety seconds remain in this opening quarter. Pirates with a four-point lead. Soper step back instead, hands off to Donaldson at the top of the key, nearly stolen away by Smith. Active hands by Spencer. A lot of tips and deflections. You can tell that's one of the recipes. Live ball turnovers. Branson Hilty. Hands off, sets the screen to Donaldson. Deep three from Merrick. Donaldson left it a little short. And the Bearcats end up with a loose basketball. Henline wants to move. Baseline drive. Got it up, couldn't get it in. Ball goes out of bounds. It will go to Bluffton. And their degree of difficulty right now, Garrett's about a 10 on their shots. They're really, they're really pressing to try to do things uh, individually. Not, not because they're being selfish, just because they're trying to make a play. And, and right now, I'm sure that Coach uh, Sensible will we'll, we'll discuss that after the first quarter here. And how much is that is, you know, they probably got, you know, drilled into them, hey, we want to run, we want to run, we want to run, because we want to wear Bluffton down because they're only going to play seven guys or so. Yeah, and, and that's when you press a little bit. You can see Bluffton's really trying to spread them out right now. Donaldson tightly pressured. Hands off to Soper. Sensible all over him inside the center circle. 35 seconds to go in the quarter. I would have now holding for the last shot. Sorry, Garrett. I'll, I'll, I expect a double on that, that handoff here as the game goes on. Soper for three off the mark. Rebound, though, comes down to Boblet. 20 seconds. Soper, another shot blocked by Carter Orr. And here come the Bearcats with 15 seconds. Smith tried to leave it off for Sudoff. Ball's loose in the lane to Orr. Throws up a shot. Can't get it. Bearcats collide on the rebound attempt. Eight seconds to go for the Pirates as Donaldson gets it across half court with five. 
The sophomore in a tough spot, leans for three. Missed everything, and we played one quarter of basketball. Bluffton leads Spencerville 13-9 on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's free throw line sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Also, instant replays tonight brought to you by Matt's Heating and Cooling. It's your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Four point advantage for the Pirates in this after one quarter of play. And Mark, when you take a look at what you saw, anything in particular stand out to you? Well, first of all, uh, Spencerville is two for 10, and almost all those were layups. They, they were, I think at one point you said threw it up. And I think they, that's how they were shooting. They, they were just pressing on their, their layups. And, and Bluffton, for that, they were five for eight from two and out rebounded them eight to five. So that's a great first quarter for Bluffton tempo wise. Pirates begin the quarter with the basketball. Okay, Soper works it to John Paul Yoder, double teamed, and he traveled with it once he got it. Right idea, Garrett. He back cut the pressure, but he took one extra step. So a turnover to begin the second quarter for Bluffton. Bearcats bring it across the timeline. It's Dylan Smith angles to the middle of the floor. Throws left to Emmett Osting. Working around the perimeter. Down low to Sudoff. Turnaround jumper. Can't hit. Ball poked high in the air by John Paul Yoder. Scoops up the loose basketball. Bluffton wants to run just a bit. Hand off to Soper. Inside the three-point line. Foul committed by Osting. His first. And Garrett, that was a great possession by Spencerville. They went true motion, block to block, had a wide open layup, and just, and just missed it. And that's what they've done here. The first thing you know about Eight minutes, nine minutes of the game. Boblet in a tough spot on the corner. Threw it out of bounds off of Orr. It'll stay with the Pirates. Now Merrick Donaldson will send, get sent back to the scorer's table. He's going to sub in for Taryn Boblet. Pirates in that tough spot to inbound a basketball there. It is. You're, it, it's hard to get it in because you get to the end of the corner and a double team you. Which it just did right there. Nearly stripped Yoder, scoops it up, poked loose once more. Still on the floor. We'll see if it's a jump ball. It is. And the possession arrow favors the Bearcats. First down, Spencerville. <laughs> that was this great hustle. That's what you love about high school basketball. We had four guys dive on the floor on two loose balls. That's what it's all about right there. Bearcats trailing by four, looking to trim into the Bluffton lead. Osteen or Henline. Lobs down low. Sudoff, turnaround, hook shot, got it to go. Great possession. They went one in, four out, and he was really patient with the size advantage to, to finish inside. So the lead down two for the Pirates. Still scoreless, a minute 15 into the quarter. Soper to Donaldson. Eyed the rim for a moment. Will back back out, guarded by Hemline. Tries to drive past him, does. Floater in the lane, and he's called for the charge. And that's two charges by Spencerville. When you have a great team, players make those kind of plays. Everybody makes those plays. And a good right-handed drive, but he was set, and we're going the other way. Yeah, you saw Dylan Smith just parked there. Just, I don't know, he might as well have bought real estate, had a deed there in the lane. Got run over, and a nice job taking the charge there. And frankly, stealing a possession from Bluffton. They sent the ball. Gives to Summers, throws right to Henline. Bounces it to Sudoff once more, and that's a matchup Spencerville's trying to exploit here in the second quarter. He's given him a great lift uh, off the bench for him, and, and actually he starts, but he's given a really good lift with, with two shots here to start the second quarter. We're all knotted up at 13. As the Pirates stuck at that number for quite a while here in this first half as Merrick Donaldson bounces. Bearcats pressure. Worcester to the window, leaves it off for Yoder, has to slap it back into play. Got it off the shin of Sudoff. It'll stay with the Pirates. And if Spencerville charged deflections, they have to average over 20 games because they've had uh, double figures already on this deflection. And they got a lot of length as well. You see Blake Summers guarding the basketball there. It just 
a tough thing to deal with when you're a little smaller like Bluffton is. It's Worcester stripped and a foul committed by the Bearcats. Goes against Sudoff, his first. So 5.41 to go and a timeout called by Bluffton. All, not, all knotted up at 13. We'll step aside here in the second quarter on WOSN. Tonight's three point sponsor is Springfield Fireworks. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week, nine to seven. Just a pair of Springfield Fireworks three pointers here in this first. What are we up to? 11 minutes of action as Josh Henline hit one of those Springfield Firework three-pointers. Passes up ahead to Dylan Smith, drops it in. And that's another live ball turnover for a layup, and that's nine turnovers for Bluffton here early in the second quarter. Lead back with Spencerville at 15-13. Donaldson jump stops in the lane, leaves it off for Yoder, can't handle it, throws it back into Donaldson, out of play. And they'll say it stays with the boys in red. And that's what's impressing most about Spencerville is that this is their active hands. Two more deflections that possession, and, and they're speeding Bluffton up right now. When you speed somebody up, then that's right to Spencerville's uh, style. So Bluffton needs a great possession here. Yoder out of the ball game in exchange for Boblett. It's Taryn Boblett. It's like a little 2-3 zone from Spencerville, and they had a bounce, and they, they stayed in it. Donaldson surveys that Spencerville deep. Throws left to Soper. Five minutes to go in this first half. Pirates looking for a bucket. Haven't had one in a long time. Trailing by two. And I think Bluffton's okay with this. They, they need to get this tempo yeah. slowed down a little bit. To the window. Ginther drops it in to stop the run from Spencerville to tie it up at 15. And that's been their strength. They've driven right at pressure. Sends a ball. Throws right to Osting. Four and a half to go in this opening half. Trying to get it down low to Summers. Foul committed by Boblet. That'll be his second. Coach Sensiball played at Ohio Northern, known for defense at Ohio Northern. He, he was an offensive player, but I'm sure one on one approach and one on one zigzags could be an emphasis next week of practice. Summers in the lane, left hand turnaround. No. Sudoff, the putback. Also, no. Or throws up a wild shot. Bob with the board to grab it for the Pirates. Two offensive rebounds there, but nothing to show for it. And uh, this tempo, again, is what Bluffton wants patience and take the shot they want off the drive or spreading it. Ginther tightly guarded by Osteen. Angle to the middle of the floor, hand off. Boblet thought about the jumper from the elbow. Instead, Soper for three, no. And a rebound grabbed by Sensiball. Deep outlet pass to Orr, drops it in. And that's three layups, just full court passes off turnovers or rebounds this quarter. Pirates back quickly the other way, rejected. Out of bounds by Carter Sudoff on a big block. That's where size comes in, and Spencerville definitely has that advantage tonight. Set off the 6'6 junior center. Averages eight and a half points tonight, has six here in the first half. Four here in the first half, I should say. Boblet gets a screen. Bounces back to Donaldson. Straight away to Ginther. Tries to kick it back in the corner to Boblet. He'll pick it up at the left elbow. Do a 360 and hand to Donaldson as we approach three minutes to go in this opening half. And Bluffton's footwork is really good on the jump stop. If you watch him, jump stop and pivot. There's the pivot. And then back cut. Baseline. Worcester thought about the three. Instead, Donaldson traveled with it. Got in a tough spot, stumbled. And that's a tur another turnover for Bluffton. And Coach Sensible showed a lot of emotion. Yeah. Usually he's like Brad Stevens uh, was for the Celtics, nice and calm, but he liked that possession by uh, Spencerville there. Bearcats with a two-point advantage as 
Dylan Smith barks out the offense as he comes up the floor. Throws left to Henline, who hit the Springfield Firework three-pointer and has gone somewhat silent since. Lob down low to sit off and lays it off the window. And that's playing together for a long time to be able to time that, throw it up, and catch it in the air and finish. Soper drives past Henline, blocked by the senior. Donaldson thought about the three, goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Pirates. As you see Kevin Sensiball there, pumped up about his defensive effort. And this is the kind of tempo they want. They want to keep on this tempo because Bluffton has controlled it for most of the game overall. And um, I know that, that Coach Sensiball really wants a, a quick tempo. Yeah, and Todd Bible told us, hey, we got to slow them down. It, we, we just can't get into that rat race with them. And they've done a good job on the offensive end, being patient, taking their time, as you see it here. Donaldson picked it up, bounces to Soper, guarded by Henline. Once a ball screen from Yoder, gets it. Soper at the free throw line, kicks in a corner. Foul committed by the Bearcats. That's only 14 fouls, and so they're away the bonus, and the next foul on Bluffton, Spencer will be in the bonus. Pirates inbound quickly to Donaldson, fires it up. The Springfield Fireworks three off the mark. Henline to board, long outlet pass to Osting. Can't hit. Nearly got his own offensive rebound and did. Orr fouled as he went for the drive. And that's going to be one on one. And Spencerville's knack for the ball. They missed, they missed some easy layups and some tough layups, but their knack for getting their hands in the ball has been incredible. And, that, and you can see why they're 14 and 1. Even though they're not playing their best right now, they've made some incredible effort plays to, to be up four right now. That's the third foul committed by Taryn Boblet, so he'll take a seat conceivably for the remainder of the half here as Carter Orr steps to the least famous recipe free throw line and hits the first. He's got three points on the evening. The lead now five for Spencerville. And Orr hit them both from the least famous recipe free throw line. So the Leifeld Industrial Motor Supply scoreboard says 21-15 Bearcats. Bluffton holds. Donaldson on the right wing, back back out. Soper comes off a screen, right elbow jumper, yes. Really good possession execution there. And after that first three to start the game by Henline, he hadn't scored. Sudoff, the pass, the fancy pass from Dylan Smith. Sudoff with eight already at his season average here in the first half and a six-point lead once more for the Bearcats. That's a great uh, team move play right there. Great ball move for a layup. Soper on the left wing, nearly poked from behind. He'll rise and fire. Can't hit. Rebound pulled down by Osting. Long outlet pass to Smith. Barrel through by Soper, and he'll pick up his second foul. And you're seeing here transition is really important because they're looking for the baseball pass every time. You see that long outlet pass on the Mats heating and cooling red zone, and you see Soper just sends Smith to the floor. So the 64% free throw shooter will step to the least famous recipe free throw line. Can't hit the first, but the offensive rebound by Orr. Can't hit the putback. Ball still loose. Donaldson scoops it up for Bluffton with one minute to go. And there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, watching tape on, on, on missed opportunities by Spencerville, but again, give Bluffton credit. They've controlled this tempo this first half, and the game's in the 40s. They'll love that. 45 seconds out of bounds off the Pirates, and it goes to Spencerville. Great play by Henline. That's 11 turnovers now by, by Bluffton, so they have to be very happy with the tempo. 11 turnovers and only down six right now. 23-17 on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Bearcats bringing across the timeline with Dylan Smith. This is Josh Henline. Hit the Springfield Fireworks three to begin the game. It's about gone quiet since his or scoops it up. And they'll say it stays with the Bearcats. And again, that's just a, a sloppy turnover for Spencerville. And or they'll say it goes to the Pirates. I thought it was should be Bluffton ball, but they never <laughs> motioned either way. So Bluffton with 30 seconds. They're going to oh. try to get the last possession, I'm sure, right now. Soper poked away. Lane's back in the hands of Worcester. Goes to the window, fouled. 
foul goes against Carter Orr, his second. And a great job by Osi there. I think they were playing for the last shot there, but got tipped and he had a wide open driving lane and went right at the big guys and made a great play. And you can't fault Worcester for going to the window there to try to get something going with that much space. Missed the first free throw attempt. Got him down as a 93% free throw shooter. He just jinxed them. Got that one to go from the least famous recipe free throw line. First point on the scoreboard for him. With 20 seconds to go, a five point lead for Spencerville. Look They'll for, try to hold for the last yeah, shot. I look for a set here to get Henline a shot. There it Henline. is on the block. Down low, an easy bucket for Josh Henline, giving him five points. Four seconds for Donaldson. Not sure he knows it. Soper from the volleyball line. Left it well short. And we've played one half of basketball. Spencerville trailed by four after one. They lead by seven after two here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Tonight's instant replay is also brought to you by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Spencerville outscores Bluffton 14 to five in the second quarter to grab a 25-18 lead. And Mark, when you take a look at the first half stats, uh, really Spencerville just frankly got off more shots because Bluffton turned it over so frequently. They did. Bluffton was se seven of 13, 54% from two, one of five, 20%. 44%, but only 18 shots because he had 11 turnovers. The boards were even. Spencerville, 40% from the field the first half. And these first three minutes are crucial, Garrett, for, for both teams. Bluffton begins the third quarter with the basketball. Soper gives to Yoder. Gets right back to Soper. Original starting five on the floor for Bluffton. As Donaldson will set up for a Springfield Fireworks three and buries it. That's a big shot. Lee score had two points in the first uh, half and hits a three right, right away to open up the, the third quarter. Big shot. Dylan Smith to the window, drops one home. He has really perfected that one-handed kind of scoop layup. Looks like uh, from the NBA, Rondo did that a lot with, yeah. in his glory days. He's really good at that. Straight away, three on the way, and another Springfield Fireworks three for Wade Ginther. Just like that, the lead for Spencerville down to three. And he had a quiet first half, too. His family didn't score, so great start for Bluffton. Dylan Cook with his back to the basket, soot off the floater in here. And I think we're seeing the rust of this week with all the cancellations and delays and no practice. The rust is off offensively now. We'll see who makes the first adjustment defensively here in the third. Some high-quality basketball played in the first minute 15 of this third quarter. As a floater now for Bluffton on the way. Yoder nearly grabbed the board, hit the deck. Smith grabs the loose basketball. It's a two on five. Smith doesn't care, goes to the window, but can't hit. And the Pirates want to run for just a moment. They'll bounce to Soper on the right wing. Slings a pass at the top of the key to Ginther. And a charge called by, charged against Ginther, I should say. That's Spencerville's third. Uh, charge taken tonight and because Bluffton is trying to drive it so hard against the pressure that's great team defense right here and that's why again why they're 14 and 1. Yeah you saw it there in the middle of the Mattini and cooling instant replay and that's a astute point there it's the third time that you know leading into those turnovers that Spencerville has picked up a charge call that could have led to you know six, six points for Bluffton. Soot off down low turns around can't hit foul charged against that's Carter stood off second and we talked about that pregame Garrett they boxed out one more step there Bluffton did and was able to get the foul called uh, over the back and Bluffton coming in knew that hey, we got to send five guys to the board because they just they don't have the size that, that Spencerville does and another charge picked up by Dylan Cook against Wade Ginther what you really like about Spencerville, all five guys out there know their roles, and, and that's really a good play. Just a step it in, Dylan Cook. And, and before you could see on the Matt's heating and cooling instant replay, before Cook could hit the deck, Wade Ginther had his palms through the sky, saying, like, what, what do I got to do here? 
Well, the answer, I guess, is not that. Is it a foul committed the other way by Spencerville on Josh Henline, his second? And these teams know each other very well. Veteran coaches, they do a great job of scouting. So the, the offense is trying to get an advantage. The defense is trying to get an advantage. They know what's going on. And, and so you have these little screens or charges that happen throughout the game. Donaldson on the left wing. Step back. Instead, fires in the corner. Gets it right back. Thought about the Springfield fireworks three. Instead, hands off to Soper, trying to create any space he can against Smith. Donaldson double teamed. And we'll give back to Soper. Straight away. Bounces to Yoder. Hands right back off to Soper inside the three-point line. Looking to get rid of it. Does. Gets it right back after the handoff to Yoder. To the glass. Wants the hoop and the harm. Only got the harm. And he'll step to the least famous recipe for each throw line. And he did a great job. That was a good possession. Their footwork was really good. They jump stopped. They pivoted. And he saw a driving angle. And there wasn't help this time. And great job getting to the free throw line. So Soper, a 56% free throw shooter, steps to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Swirls and off and out on the first attempt. And people ask, how do you get rid of help? Well, you got to move the ball side, middle, side. And the ball came back to the middle off that handoff, and that's how you, you eliminate help. Because when the ball moves, you got to move with the ball and, and guard your man as well. Soper hits the second, giving him an even 10, which is exactly his season average. Lead down to four, 29-25 on the Layfield Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. As Smith to the block, too strong. Yoder the board. Pirates can run a bit if they want. Donaldson will pick it up, bounce to Yoder, hand right back off to Donaldson. Merrick Donaldson lost the handle. Get it in the near corner. Ginther had time, instead gets an easy bucket to Donaldson in the lane. Bearcats back quickly the other way. Henline out of control, out of bounds, off of the Pirates. That last possession by Bluffton was a clinic on shot fake and moving and cutting and passing. And that really is what you have to do against somebody that's really aggressive and physical like Spencerville is. And really, for I'm sure for Bluffton, you know, it's that's a difficult shot to pass up in the corner, wide open for three, but it, you drive it a little bit, leads to a wide open layup, and it leads now to his headline, flares off his screen. Springfield Firework three off the mark. Donaldson aboard. That was one of our keys, Garrett. One more pass, and they did that last possession. Worcester to the window, fouled on the floor. Wouldn't have counted if it dropped. And Coach Bobo did another thing there. He spread them way out. That eliminates help, too. And, and they had a driving angle again. And that's where Bluffton has been really successful tonight when they spread them out and drive it in, in the last possession, jump stop, and throw a bounce pass to the backside. Yeah, and you can see kind of the chess match being played with 15, 16, 17, and 18-year-old kids as it goes out of bounds off the Pirates where, you know, Bluffton wants to spread them out and give themselves more room to eliminate that help defense. But then also, Spencerville knows that's exactly what Bluffton's trying to do. Yeah, and on the out of bounds play underneath, the ball goes to the corner. They're trapping in Coach Bob, but, you know, that, that's what gives coaches gray hair, for me, no hair. <laughs> Blake Summers with his back to the basket, trying to get to the lane. Instead, kicks to Henline in the corner, guarded by Soper. Baseline drive by the senior, slaps it off the window. He's an outstanding athlete, and really took advantage of that play there. Quickly back the other way, Ginther, no. Summers wipes the glass. Bryce Sensible, and a travel called. I think he called Blake. over the back. Uh, uh, there was a lot of passing back and forth, and I. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it was, looks it was, like you see Kevin Sensible. He's not really sure either. And, and somehow, Coach Sensible. It hair, looked awkward. Yeah, it looked awkward, but his hair hasn't turned green. No, he. I was. I about mentioned earlier. Sensible's coach for Spencerville for 21 years. Todd Bob at 17. There's 38 years between the two of them. I don't know that either one of them looks 38 years old. No, it, it, it's impressive. Another turnover. Handline to the free throw line. Kicks in the far corner. Osting a little bit of space. Tries to bounce a pass to Summers on the block. Can't hit it. And the Pirates come back the other way. Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Bluffton. They trail by four. 31-27. We'll step aside with more third quarter action coming up. You're on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations 
in Coldwater and Greenville. Lakefield Industrial Monic Supply scoreboard reads 31-27 Spencerville with the lead and a timeout called by Todd Boblett. Mark, what did, what did Coach Boblett want to talk to his squad about here? That was a great timeout. You know, it's been all been about transition and Spencerville wanting to go, go, go. They were okay with some quick shots and a few turnovers, but Coach Boblett saw this thing going to get to a track beat, and I think he wants to reestablish tempo. It's a four-point game, as well as both teams played the first three minutes of this quarter. It's gotten really sloppy, mm -hmm. and that's not good for Bluffton if it gets sloppy and out of control. And so that was an outstanding timeout he used right there. We'll see if uh, Spencerville does anything di different defensively now. Pirates retain possession of the basketball. Skinter bounces to the right elbow. Worcester in a lane, guarded by Summers, trying to get him in the air. Instead, will throw back out to Soper. Spins at the right elbow. Bullets a pass off a of Bearcat. Stays with Bluffton. Another deflection, but but again, didn't create a turnover. Out of bounds, we can't throw it to the corner is what, what Coach Boblet's saying. He didn't want to throw it's it there. Look, it's, looking, it's looking mighty tasty there to Merrick Donaldson. A, uh, when you're scanning the floor for somebody in red and you hear three, four, that corner looks awful tempting. Instead, Worcester has it, tries to get past Summers in the lane, got him in the air, can't hit, but he'll step to the least famous recipe free throw line. And that's your goal as a driver, Garrett, to, to eliminate space. Space equals a block shot. Watch this. He goes right into him when he left the floor, and that's contact, and that's a foul, two free throws. You see a great look at it from RWOSN crew on the Mats heating and cool against a replay. Free throw by Worcester up and good. This is ideal for Bluffton because they can set their defense right now, and, and Spencerville can't run and get out as fast. It slows the game down, which is perfect for them. Hit them both from the least famous recipe free throw line. He's got three. And another great coach move that people don't see is Coach Boblet subbed in the second make. That makes the ball get reset again. The defense is set. Those are just outstanding moves that he's made in this third quarter. Approaching two and a half to go in the third quarter. Two-point lead for the Bearcats as Osting picks it up. Bounces back to sense a ball between the circles. Throws right to Orr. Henline isolated on this side of the floor. Gives to Osting. He'll jab in the high post. Window blocked. Throws it back into play, but it's right to Carson Soper. He'll sprint up the floor. Poked by Henline. Soper scoops up. Gives to Boblet. Playing with three fouls. Donaldson bounces to Yoder. Fakes the handoff. Instead, gives to Soper. Right elbow back to Donaldson with two minutes to go in the quarter. Really good possession by Bluffton right now. They've spread them out. They're being patient. The, 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 the pace is perfect from that timeout on uh, for Bluffton. Pirates content to take some time. Ginther got his man in the air. Bounces to Yoder. Fouled by Osting, his third and that's the sixth foul here committed by Spencerville in the third quarter. And one of the things I know that Coach Boblett had to talk about at halftime was a shot fake, because you've seen a lot yeah. of shot fakes in this third quarter. And Spencerville's left their feet quite a bit. Pirates baseball pass into the backcourt to John Paul Yoder. Gets it up ahead to Ginther. Tightly guarded by Smith. He steals it away. It's a race to the window that he wins to give him 10 points. That's about five live, live ball layup turnovers tonight. And that's what Spencerville's really, really good at. Their hands are quick and great play by Smith there. Soper gets a screen from Yoder. Gives it to him. Gives it right back, but it's stolen away by Henline. And another live ball turnover. Henline now with nine to grow the lead to six. And just like that, that shows you the experience of Spencerville. And they're just attacking right now. Donaldson, the sophomore, gives to Yoder. Gives it to Boblet on the left wing. Doesn't use the screen. Soper has a little bit of space. Takes it to the lane. Ginther lost the handle on it. Slightly indecisive on whether he wanted to put up a Springfield Fireworks 3 or not. Instead, Soper 
Blocked from behind. Gets it to Donaldson all day to set up for three and splashes home another Springfield fireworks triple. That's a huge shot. The three in the corner stopped the bleeding there a little bit for Bluffton, and it's a three-point game. Cuts the lead in half and a charge committed by Dylan Smith. So we've seen Spencerville take several charges. That's the first I think they've given. That is, and, and, and really good response by Bluff because Spencerville, they really were attacking, and they got a good block shot that happened to go right to him, and, and the best shooter in the gym uh, made a huge shot there. Looked for last possession uh, to, to get uh, Donaldson open a shot. Ten seconds. Worcester to the window. Got it and the foul. And you can see what they did there, Garrett. They made an adjustment. Instead of their, their post player, that's a handoff screener, they put a driver at the high post. And the one little fake here, you can see this, and he's off to All the All sorts of room to work with there. Matt's heating and cooling instant replay. You get a good look at it. Foul. That's a really good skill play there to go into the body versus having space where they can block the shot. So Bluffton will... Send their rebounders back near the half-court stripe. Worcester hits the free throw. He's got six points. Now with five, Smith to the right wing. In the short corner with three. Lost it. Out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bearcats with one second. And I think if he's told somebody to be 35, 35 after three, Bluffton would take it. Spencerville's averaging 66 points a game. Bearcats. Conceivably in a catch-and-shoot situation. Henline, deep three, good if it goes, off the heel. And we played three. Bluffton outscores Spencerville 17-10. We're all knotted up at 335 after three on WOSN. Tonight's free throw sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Instant replays also brought to you tonight by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Spencerville grew the lead to as much as six with about a minute five to go. And unluckily for the Bearcats, we're all tied up at 35 after three. Yeah, they got a little frustrated late and tried to do things on their own. And, and Bluffton's going to keep on battling. And it's going to be interesting to see what Adjustments Coach Sensible makes sure to start the fourth quarter. Smith works to the right, gets down low, set off an easy bucket to begin the fourth quarter. Great set, high ball screen, and Smith did a great job of, of finding the open man inside. Worcester between the circles. Hands off to Donaldson, thought about the three, instead to the window, floater in. A runner, can't hit, Henline back the other way, high off the glass and drops it home. They just can score so explosively and quick, and, and they're turning it on right now, and Bluffton needs the answer. So the lead quickly grows to four for the Bearcats. Worcester for three, hits a Springfield Fireworks three. Another huge shot by Bluffton. He, he's got five points here in the last few minutes. Uh, and I think he's got eight of his nine points here in the second half. Yeah, and they put him at the high post. That's been a good adjustment that they made. Henline tightly guarded by Soper, creates a little room on a baseline. Blocked by Donaldson, but fouled. And Josh Henline will shoot two Lee's famous, famous recipe free throws. And this is just a great Northwest Conference basketball game. The balance scoring, they, they know each other very well. Two veteran coaches. This is really uh, a great Friday night in high school basketball. Henline, an 84% free throw shooter. Left it short on the first. And it may come down to free throws. Both teams are right around 70%, which is good in, in high school basketball. Missed that first one. And still with just shy of seven minutes to play, Spencerville's already uh, has eight fouls, getting pretty close to putting Bluffton in the double bonus. Henline hits the second. He's got 12, averages 16, but the lead down two. And a lot of that's because they've really tried to push the tempo and they've gotten in some foul trouble with on shot fakes and, and, and ball pressure. You see ball pressure right there as Dylan Smith rolls one out of bounds. So the Pirates retain possession in the front court. Wade Ginter will inbound. 
I look for another high post action here and and, and maybe try to get uh, uh, Donaldson off a of screen. And the you see Donaldson come off a of screen right there at the top of the key. They'll back back out near the midcourt stripe. Six and a half to play. Two point lead for the Bearcats. Pirate basketball. Soper. Tightly guarded by Henline, bounces to Worcester. Soper, the lone senior for the Pirates, with his back to the basket, gives to Donaldson. Step back, Springfield fireworks three off the window. The bank is open at 8.30. Sometimes it's good to be lucky, and that was a tough shot, and he banked it home. The lead for Bluffton, now it's taken right back by Dylan Smith. Smith with 12, makes it 42-41 on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supply scoreboard. Worcester directing traffic, gives to Moblet. Soper will hold. What a great adjustment they've made. They can do a lot of things out of it. Soper for three in the lead. No, Smith the board. Smith at the free throw line, right down Main Street. Can't hit, Soot off the putback. And Smith has created a tremendous amount of pressure on Bluffton's defense right now. His change of speed, he missed the layup, but he had to help. Donaldson, deep three off the mark. Smith the board. Bearcats want to push. Sends a ball at the left block. Straight away, or for the three. Can't hit, rimmed around and out. Would have grown the lead to six. Instead, a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Todd Boblet. 5.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. We've got a dandy of the Northwest Conference here on WOSS. Three points tonight brought to you by Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton. They're your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week from 9 to 7. Five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. A three-point lead for Spencerville. And is that another one of those timeouts, Mark, where uh, one of those Metzger Financial Services timeout where Todd Baba could feel the pace starting to pick up and reiterate to his squad, hey, we got to slow it down here? Absolutely. It was getting frenetic for them, and, and they needed to get them themselves readjusted and recalibrated. Worcester comes back to the basket at the left wing, gives to Boblet. Taryn Boblet, hands off. Wink in there. Soper holds on the left wing. With the Pirates. Patient and deliberate. Trailing by three. And we kind of expected that, this possession, and another deflection. Smith is really his uh, Defense and his aggressiveness offensively has really set the tone this four, in the first four minutes of this uh, fourth quarter. Pirates working to Donaldson on the left wing. Gives to Worcester. Trying to get Donaldson off a of screen. Instead, Boblet gets it on the left wing. He'll rise and fire. Mid-range jumper swirled around. Didn't drop home. Soot off. Grabs the rebound. And Smith's head is always up, looking for teammates, looking for, for different kind of plays. Lobs in the far corner, Henline for three, got it! Great flare screen, huge shot. It's ballooned to six now, with four to go. Henline now with a couple of Springfield fireworks threes, getting him to 15 points. Boblet on the way, and he buries a firework. And every time they start to pull away to six or so, they answer with a three. Trims the lean to three. Smith right to the block. Picks up the dribble. Leans. Can't hit. Soot off the putback. No. Ginther slowly across the timeline. Angles to the far sideline. Coach Bobba got him slowed down. He, he was well on the floor on that possession. Bobba gives to Soper. Slaps a pass off the floor. Gets it right back. Soper, Worcester in the high post, spins, left hand hook shot, no. Great possession, just missed the layup. Carter or the rebound, Bearcats in transition, Sudoff drops it home. Carter Sudoff averages eight and a half, he's got 16 tonight. Growing the lead to five with under three to go. That was a really nice pass from Sensiball. Donaldson straight to the window, picks up the dribble, straight away, Worcester pump fakes. Pumps again on the left elbow floater. Can't hit. Another rebound comes down to Sudoff. Two great looks by Bluffton, but a little sped up on both those shots. Sensiball fouled on the drive by Boblet. That's his fourth. 
And that will bring John Paul Yoder back in the game for the Pirates. And that's only 14 fouls, Garrett. So, yeah. so Bluffton's going to have to start fouling at some point here to put him in the bonus. Bounce to Orr right off the inbounds, drops it in. Carter Orr now is six. Great execution, great screen, set it up with a nice V cut, and that was a clinic by Spencerville. Two and a half to play. Seven point lead for the Bearcats. Pirates trying to trim it. Soper thought about the Springfield Fireworks three, but it's poked from behind by Henline. Orr will wisely pull it out. Hand off to Smith. They're going to spread them out now. They've got fouls, and they're up by seven. And Dylan Smith content to watch the numbers tick off the clock on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. Got to a spot, turnaround, right hand hook shot, and the foul. No. The basket's good. The basket's good. We got a foul on the Bearcats. Not sure who the foul was on. I'm not sure either. It's uh, on. 23. I believe it was it was uh, set up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was looking at Bluffton. I was like staring at the Bluffton like and they're the bonus. Yeah. So they're shooting one on one now because that's 19 fouls. They're two shots this this point on. So John Paul Yoder steps to the line. 78 percent free throw shooter, scoreless so far tonight. Front end of the one on one. Got the first. And Bluffton's has answered every run by Spencer, but you can see the last minute or so, some careless turnovers, transition, and, and really, again, can't say enough about how Dylan Smith has pushed the tempo, has gone downhill, created for others and himself. Yoder, the 6'3 junior, back at the line. And he only hit one from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, so the lead stays eight with under two to go. Smith across the timeline. And they'll entrust him to hold the basketball and make Bluffton come out, chase him, or foul him. And he does get fouled by Wade Ginther, his fourth. And that will send Carey Wright in the ballgame for the first time. Still two, Bluffton. Sorry. Still two more fouls uh, before the bonus. So Bluffton's got a foul right away. They're, they're trying to put players in to get fouls and go offense, defense here. Yeah, Branson Hilty now comes in as well for the Pirates. He's trying to foul Smith. Didn't get one there. Trying to foul him still. Approaching 90 seconds to play. Smith will pull it back out. His change of speed is excellent. You watch him dribble. He does a lot of change of speed stuff. See it right there. Slows it down. Fouled by Soper. His third. And that is still one foul to give for Bluffton. And Bluffton uh, waited a long time before fouling there. And right now, Coach Sensible has all five timeouts. He, 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 has, he can do whatever he wants, you know, with subbing and situational things and talking to his team now to finish the game. Sitting in the catbird seat. Bearcats look to inbound. Get it to Sudoff. Got right out of his hands to Carter Orr. He's fouled. And the six foot two sophomore will step to the least famous recipe free throw line. Already with six points tonight. Second foul committed by Worcester. So now both, so both squads shooting free throws. Anytime we got a foul the rest of the way. It's in Spencerville, 69% on the year, so they're a good free throw shooting. You'd expect that a team that's only lost one game. Right. Or hits the first from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And that's a little unusual in Lima land, Garrett. There, it, it is. There's uh, no teams with, with zero losses. Like Liberty Bend's in that area with no, but no one else, everybody else has at least one loss. That's unusual. Offensive rebound by Sudoff, put back, no. Or the offensive rebound's up and good. And so the lead now 11, the largest of the night. He's given them a great spark tonight. He's done a lot of good things for them. Sudoff has 16 to lead all scorers. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Pirates. Spencerville growing a the lead. There's Carter. Sudoff gets a hearty cheer as he heads to the bench. 
Pirates look, look into Donaldson. Ginther, floater, no. Offensive rebound by Soper. Fade away, got it. That's your financial services timeout called for by Bluffton head coach Todd Boblett. We got a break in the action and a break here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Nine-point game here in the fourth quarter. Bluffton 4-1 in the NWC. Spencerville 4-0. So the Pirates still, as of a little more than a minute to go in this fourth quarter, control their own destiny and grabbing a share of the league title, which they had a year ago. I'm not sure how much longer you're going to be able to use that line, Garrett, uh, <laughs> about controlling their own destiny. But again, it's a three-possession game, and, and a lot of things can happen. And, and, and we've, we've seen Bluffton, you know, at the uh, end of the third quarter. They trailed by six with a minute and five to go and got out of the quarter tied. No one's guarding the guy deep right now. Bearcats take the safe pass in. Smith fouled along the far sideline by Luke Genter. In the ball game for the first time. So Smith will step to the line. And both teams do a lot of offense, defense, and, and that's the way it's going to be here. Again, Spencerville's got five timeouts, bluffed them no. down to one, and so the, the chances are getting you know fewer and fewer for Bluffton. Dylan Smith, the 6'2 senior guard, was a second team all NWC performer a year ago. Drops the first one out. Rebound comes down to the Pirates. Donaldson quickly up the floor to Boblett. Hands right back to Donaldson. Soper straight away for a Springfield Fireworks three. Off the heel, soot off the board. And Bluffton wanted to foul him quickly. And that was a good foul. Uh, soot off this struggle from the line this yeah. year. And, you know, that's – he's got a – this is great for him to get a chance to make a couple pressure free throws as you head to tournament to get confidence and those kind of things. I'm sure he's – Practicing and, and concentrating, just hadn't shot very well this year. This is an opportunity for him. The six foot six junior, 16 points so far tonight. Front end of the one and one. Got the first. He's got 17. And he's really played an outstanding game tonight. Yeah. He got yeah. them going with some really good fundamental post plays. He's rebounded, he's blocked shots. He's really helped them inside tonight. Been tremendous. The 43% free throw shooter hits both of them from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Growing the lead back to 11. Henline pokes it away. Ball still loose. Sudoff hits the deck. And a timeout called. Great heads up play there on the Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll keep it here with the 11 point lead for Spencerville. And it's just sort of been that kind of night to Bearcats leaping and diving, do whatever they got to do to grab a victory here tonight. And it hasn't been all the way clean and pure, but that fourth quarter, we said what kind of adjustments they made. I think the, the adjustments were their seniors kind of took over here. Yeah. Um, and, and Roy made that hustle play there. I, I was thinking Coach Sensible was going to keep all five timeouts for tomorrow <laughs> night or later on. Maybe he has a date tonight. He wants to get out of here. But uh, that was a great heads-up play, and you saw the emotion from Coach Sensible, both arms up, and, and uh, just an outstanding hustle play there. Bearcats travel to New Knoxville tomorrow. Not a very long trip for Spencerville. Bluffton also not a far trip. They're going to Pandora Gilboa tomorrow night. 38 seconds remain. Or the inbound gets it right back. I'll get it up to Josh Henline. Bluffton. Looks like they'll pressure, but won't foul. Henline, double teamed on the baseline, throws it out. Osting thought about the three. He wanted to shoot that. He did. Think. He did. And, and Coach Bob, what is, I think he's going to say no fouls, but maybe they will. I don't know. They turned it over. Ball's loose, thrown back into the hands of Osting. As the Pirates have an injured player on the floor. It's Carson Soper. So at eight seconds, he'll come out of the ball game. A classy nope, play there by Spencerville, too. They, they could have gone yeah. and tried to dunk it or lay up, and they pulled it out. There, there won't be a well, shot here. And even yeah, I saw Kevin Sensible go out on the floor and say, hey, don't be clapping, don't be hyping up the student section. Yeah. If there's an injured guy on the floor, we're going to be yeah. respectful and classy. They'll so, catch and hold it here. So 11-point lead with eight seconds to go. Spencerville. 
14 and 1. We were told for the first time in 70 years. They inbound a headline. And now they're 15 and 1 with a 58 47 hard fought victory over the Bluffton Pirates. We'll step aside, come back, and put a bow on this one. Bearcats victorious, 58 47 here on WOSN. Back here at the walk-in closet, wrapping up a 58-47 win for the Spencerville Bearcats. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined with Coach Kevin Sensiball, and uh, it, it was tight there throughout the game. You got out to lead, bluffed and clawed back, but eventually you, you used some senior leadership to, to get a victory tonight. How important is having those experienced guys on the floor for you? Yeah, it's incredibly important. Those guys do a great job for us, not on the court only, but off the court as well. They do a great job of leading. Um, it's funny, Dylan Cook uh, was sitting on the bench late in the game I think we were up by one or something and he said coach we need to put the game in the hands of Dylan and Josh and I said well we're trying and no longer did that come out of our mouth Dylan got a steal Josh got a steal and it was like he was right I mean we, you know that's what seniors are supposed to do and those guys stepped up and made huge plays down the stretch so yeah it wasn't our prettiest game but I mean you know I, I kind of expected it to be that way um, it was a little bit choppy at times. We couldn't get into an offensive rhythm, but we did a good job hanging in there and making plays down the stretch. You mentioned those live ball turnovers. You probably got 10 points off of, or 11 points off of live ball turnovers, which really kind of end up being the, the deciding point in the game. Yeah, I thought our guys did a great job of putting pressure on the basketball. Um, it, you know, even sometimes they, they got loose and got some, some loose balls and the ball got kicked around and would go their way. That happens sometimes, but I thought our guys played hard defensively the entire night, and that ended up being the difference. Carter Sudoff had a big game for you. Could you just speak to his performance and, and, and what he provided for you tonight. Well, we, we felt like we had a size advantage, obviously, so we wanted to go inside, and, and we told he and Carter Orr and Blake and, and, and Dylan Cook that, you know, we really need to own the boards, and I think we did that. I think Carter had 18 and 9 or something like that. So, yeah, it was they were like Carter Sudoff is just a difference maker because he gets rebounds. He changes shots, he blocks some shots, he can score. He's just, he's getting better every week, so I'm glad he's on my team. <laughs> well, congratulations on the victory. Best of luck against New Knoxville. We'll catch you down the road. Thanks, I appreciate it. That's Spencerville head coach Kevin Sensabaugh joining us here as they win 58-47 over the Bluffton Pirates. And now Mark Bagley joining me again. And Mark, we, we mentioned Carter Sudoff there with, with Coach Sensabaugh, and I think he's kind of the, the standout for the Staley Hustle Award winner. Yeah, he was. He made the difference inside the night. They knew they had a height advantage, and he really did a great job of finishing inside. He steadied Spencerville when they were struggling offensively and then rebounded the ball and threw some deep passes for layups as well. So he really... Uh, did an outstanding job tonight. So Carter set off our Stally Hustle Award winner. For more Stally Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. Carter Sudoff leads all, lead all scorers tonight, 18 points in the victory as Spencerville moves to 15-1 and, and remains undefeated in the Northwest Conference with a 58-47 win over the Bluffton Pirates. For our fantastic WOSN crew and Mark Bagley, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long, and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.